she'll be all right. She'll make it happen. Yeah. She's a gamer.
All right, well, welcome family and friends. And uh, Alan, would you like to join your Alan, next to your daughter? And who gives this bride away? I'm her father. And I, her mother. All right, well, Blair, you're. That's it. Separation today. Come on. <laughs> this is it. Give your daughter a kiss. Step on up. Step on up. The groom is waiting. All right. You can have a seat there. And, uh, all right. You guys can have a seat. Wow, Blair, you look beautiful. Stunning. What a wonderful day. It's a special day. Let us pray. We can bow our heads. Father, we want to ask your presence to be here in Cabo San Lucas. Lord, with family, friends joining together to celebrate this wonderful wedding of David and Blair. Father, I thank you the way you've answered prayer and brought them together. Pray that today would be the beginning of something great for both of them. Thank you for friends, for family that have traveled the far distance to come here today. So we thank you now and pray that this time together would be wonderful celebration of your goodness in their lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, uh, Blair, I know that you've been waiting for this day, working very, very hard with David, getting all the details, so we're very, very, very excited for both of you. I want to uh, want to begin by sharing with everybody what, when I asked you, I emailed you what you love most about uh, each other. I want everybody to know what is it that you know you love about each other so that you'll remember that for the rest of your lives, right? It's easy to remember the bad, and it's hard to remember the good. But, you know, I tried to remember the things that brought my wife and I together, and that's what I want to remind you. And, uh, David, this is what you said that you love about Blair and why you want to marry her. You said, the thing I love most about Blair is how amazing and how loving of a person she is to me. She cares so much more about others than herself. She is beautiful, she's loving, and she's my best friend. And then it says, I love her infectious laugh, her smile, and it's truly the best laugh ever. And, she, and he said probably the most important thing, and he says, I can't ever imagine being without her. And I would do anything for her. It's awesome, David. Proud of you, son. Blair, this is what you wrote about David. What I love about David is that he is truly my best friend. He knows me better than anyone else. And he loves me on good days, and he loves me on bad days. He also pushes me to be better, to work harder, and to achieve my goals. David has a great sense of humor. We are always laughing together and enjoying each other on things that I think are important. I'm grateful and I'm lucky to be marrying David because he is smart. I think you got that from me, right, son? Okay. You can go with mom on that one. He's smart, he's caring, and he's giving. He truly loves me, and he would do anything and everything in his power to make me happy. And I, in turn, would do the same. So, you know, I uh, was uh, reading a story about John Wooden. You know who John Wooden is, Blair? He's a basketball coach. He's the UCLA coach. He's got the, the most wins. Uh, for you uh, sports aficionados out there, how many, uh, how many wins does John Wooden have? Anybody? No? He has 644 wins. He died with 644 wins and 162 losses, and he has the highest winning percentage ever as a coach. So after a game, after he had won a championship, the reporter came up to him and they said, Mr. Wooden, coach, coach, and they called him the wizard, the wizard of Westwood. And they asked him this question, what's the greatest accomplishment you've ever done in your life? And the reporter was anxiously, anxiously awaiting for him to say something about a basketball victory. But he turned at the reporter and he said, the greatest accomplishment was marrying my wife, Nellie. 
And I think more than anything, David and Blair, this is a great accomplishment. And I know that both of you are gonna do great together. And I hope that each of you would kindle that love that you have for each other every day and that you'd be able to say at the end of your lives, the greatest accomplishment was that day in Cabo San Lucas when everybody was here suffering in the sun and enjoying this time together. So I want to begin by sharing with you real quick something that, you know, God put on my heart. And that's, you know, I was reading this story about mountaineers in the Swiss Alps when they climb. They begin in a little town, and when they go to the Matterhorn, it's interesting because most of them make it up, but very few make it down. Most of them die on the way down on the Matterhorn. They start great, but they don't finish. And the re greatest reason they don't finish is because they weren't prepared adequately. And uh, so, you know what? Marriage starts great for a lot. I'll be honest, my marriage, at first I was kind of rocky, but I can honestly tell you that my marriage, as it's getting older, it's getting better. You know, it's not easy, but it's a, it's a climb. And so I want to share with you how to have a Matterhorn marriage, how to really reach the top, because very few marriages really reach the top. Most marriages go downhill, and I've seen that. I have friends whose marriages hasn't worked out, and it goes down, but I want to share two things that I think have helped that will help you both in your marriage, and that is to understand that there is a spiritual covenant and a, and a foundation on a rock. And those two things, a spiritual covenant, what you're making today is a what's called a social covenant, right? There's a legal binding contract that's gonna bind you guys. So that's a social contract. You guys can, you guys can end that social contract. I have friends that have told me before, they said, hey, I'm getting into this marriage and you know what, if it doesn't work out, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna find somebody else. Well, that's a social contract but that's not what you're making today. I'm encouraging you guys to make a spiritual covenant. And a spiritual covenant is a covenant where you both understand that you're making a covenant between God and you and yourselves. You're making a bind to work together, to love each other through difficulties, through diff you know hard times, but you'll make it, right? And so one of the things, David, that, <laughs> that Paul writes to the Ephesians, he says, husbands, I want you to learn to love your wives. And he says that to the husbands because as men, it's easy for us to get taken up with work, with success, with our performance, with our with our hobbies, our things. But you know what? Sometimes we neglect what's most important and that's loving our wives. So I wanna encourage you, Dave, that every day you would work to love your wife. You, want, you love her through acts of kindness. You love her through words of encouragement. You look for the good in her as you said, and that will help you keep that spiritual covenant together. You know, there's a verse that I always remember, and it says that God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. And that's what God is. God's a giver. You know, and part of it is giving your best every day, right? It's learning to give, learning to be able to sacrifice instead of thinking for yourself. And that's not easy to do. But that's the spiritual covenant, is that you're willing to give. Give each other the best. Then the second thing is... Uh, you have a choice that you could build a marriage and the Bible says there's two types of marriages that you could build on One is a foundation of sand like we're standing on today But there's also a foundation on a rock That's it. There's only two foundations in life and the, the thing about the foundation on the sand You know what I see that is like a friend of mine, you know, he's he said that He said he said this to me he said, life to me is winning. It's having the most toys and making the most money. And he said, that's how I build my marriage. I know that if I just get my wife everything she wants, I'm gonna keep her happy. Well, here's the reality. The reality is that it did not work out. You know, and that's building your life upon a sand, you know? And so, but building your life upon a rock is different, right? And that's where the Lord says, if you build my, your life upon the things I share with you, the things that I've written, and I believe that, I, I believe that the Bible is the manual of life, and when you need to look for answers, I go to it, and it helps me. And so, son, that's what I encourage you, David, to build your marriage upon a rock, right? And that's going to help you endure the storms, the rains, and the winds that are going to come and attack the marriage. You know, you're going to have those trials. So, 
At the end, that's all I share with you, Blair, is a spiritual covenant and build your marriage upon the rock. Okay? Now you ready for your vows? All right. So uh, let's go to the vows. So you can repeat after me. So David, this is to Blair. I, David Perez, take you, Blair. I, David Perez, take you, Blair. <laughs> to be my lawfully wedded wife. Give me a sec. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I want you to be my intimate lover. Go to bed. Such a constant bread. In this day for In the presence of God, my family, the party people of the Ryu. <laughs> I pledge my solemn vow to be a true and faithful husband sickness and in health, in good times and in bad times, in riches and in poverty, hopefully not in poverty. <laughs> I promise to love you, to trust you, and to respect you, until death to his part. Good job, son. <laughs> Blair, your turn. I, Blair, take you, David, to be my lawfully wedded husband. I want you to be my intimate love, my devoted companion, and constant friend from this day forward. In the presence of God, my family, and friends, I pledge I love her. Oh. a solemn vow to be your true and faithful wife. In sickness or health, in good times or bad, in riches or poverty, I promise to love you, trust you, and respect you. Until death, do us Alright, now the best man and maid of honor can come up. Here's the ring. <laughs> David, you're gonna put the ring on Blair's. <laughs> Blair, I placed this ring upon you <laughs> as a token of my love and promise, faithfulness, only to you. This ring is a constant reminder of my wedding vows. <laughs> that I make before you and all who are present here today. David said he's been, Blair said he's been eating a lot. It's hard, the finger doesn't fit as good as it did. <laughs> That's Mexican food for you, bro. <laughs> David, I place this ring upon your finger as a token, as my unending love and faithfulness only to you. This ring is a constant reminder of my wedding vows that I have made before you and everyone here present. All right, let's uh, let's all stand real quick. It's almost over, son. That's great. <laughs> you made it. All right. So um, I'm going to 
I'm going to ask the family to join, come up here. We're going to have a closing prayer. So I'm going to ask the parents to come up. Come on up. Come on up, Jeff. All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we surround David and Blair today as parents. We want to thank you for our children. Lord, we thank you that they are a wonderful blessing to us in our lives. And I pray that now you would sanctify them, that you would bless them and protect their marriage. You would watch them, keep them from evil, protect their home, their relationship, and that they would continue to grow in love day by day. Teach them, Lord, that when they have issues, they turn to you and work together as a team to resolve them, to respect each other with the way they communicate, and watch what they say so that they will learn to build each other up and not tear each other down. Help them, Lord, to build a Matterhorn marriage. We thank you for this day, and thank you for the family that's here as witnesses and everyone here at the Rio. Thank you for them, too. We bless you now in your son's name, Lord Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. All right. All right. Face the crowd. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so here comes the special kiss. So, David, it has to be long because everybody's looking. <laughs> you can kiss the bride. Stand and face the crowd, ladies and gentlemen, beloved family and friends that have traveled from distant lands to this wonderful resort. Friends up there in Rio, what do you think? All right. It is my honor and privilege to present to you today. Wow. <coughs> Squeaky man here. It is my honor and privilege to introduce you to, for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. David and Blair, not Rizmonchi, it's Perez. All right. Yep, it's a toast, everybody. Stay here, Dave. We're going to do a toast. Everybody gets uh, a drink. We're going to do a toast. How do we do it? They'll bring it to you. Want to walk with it, son? All right. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
going to stay immediate family we're going to take pictures and then uh, you guys have a little bit of break and then the party is at 6 30 at uh san jose okay go out there to san jose we'll have a good time there and then uh, we have another special event after that so 6 30 san jose will be the reception right Blair? anything else that's it all right so the family immediately media family stay here yeah try not to uh, get hammered before dinner all right, Davidson, you have liberty, whatever you want to do. Jump in the pool after the Yeah. What do you mean? Sounds amazing. Pool bar, pool bar, pool bar, pool bar, pool bar, pool bar, pool bar. Pool bar. Yeah, of course. I'm going to